which shall justify the circumcision by faith, that is circumcision, that's Jewish people, and the uncircumcision, those who aren't Jewish, through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? I mean, is the, is the, then what's the point of the Ten Commandments? God forbid, forbid, or may it not be so. Yea, we establish the law, verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father is pertaining to the flesh that is found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory. The answer comes back, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God. Would you say those three words with me, starting with Abraham, please? Abraham believed God. Once again, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt, or the guy that's trying to work his way to heaven, or the guy who works in any way, he expects a paycheck. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. You may be seated. The conclusion of God in verse number 28, back in chapter 3, quiets any who are trying to trust themselves and trying to work their way somehow to impress God, to be accepted by God because of their moral state or religion. We conclude that a man is justified, verse 28, by faith without the deeds of the law, without the deeds of the law, without the deeds of the law, without the deeds of the law. That means without doing anything himself. That is very important. In other words, justified without doing something or keeping the rules or keeping God's Ten Commandments even. How often have you heard, oh yes, you must believe in Jesus, but you got to keep it. Or, but you got to keep, you know, the Ten Commandments. Or you got to keep, you know, whatever. Friend, who in the world can keep the Ten Commandments? Who in the world? It's not an 80% kind of thing. It's either you keep them all perfectly and you are qualified to be perfect and so go to heaven, or if you have broken one, you're damned. You have not kept them. So who in the world could, could buy into that kind of idea? That is trusting self. The saved have, the saved people, the ones that are truly saved, with reservations in heaven, have come naked to Christ and found him the modest clothing of righteousness to cover them, complete and sufficient alone. They were naked. They have nothing. We have nothing. And we come to Christ, and he is our modest clothing of righteousness. He is everything to us, everything that makes us on standing with God. They are justified. We saw that word. God stares at them clinging by faith to Christ alone and declares them perfectly righteous. You are justified, God says. I declare you that you are righteous. What a statement. What a statement that any one of us on a daily basis, are you not like me? Perhaps you don't realize how many times a day you sin. Well, then realize how many times a day I sin. Do we not realize how incredible it is that God Almighty on any terms could call us justified, could call us righteous. God is truthful. He never lies. And yet he's able because of Jesus Christ, if we have faith on him alone, to look at us and say, Jake is justified. David is justified. He is righteous. Both of their parents say, oh. <laughs> but see, it's on the merits of Christ. It is God looking at Christ for them. Doesn't see with them. That is great, and that is good, and somebody ought to praise the Lord for it. It's just good. It's just incredible. Yeah, we've heard it so many times. It doesn't do what it should do. It will the day you see the Lord. <laughs> Verse 29, ask, look, please, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yea, of the Gentiles also. He, you know, it's the frank question of who, who gets covered by this, okay? Who gets that? Who can get that? Only the Jews? No, no. Since the Christ... Since the cross, God has torn down the dividing wall, the Bible says, of Jews and Gentiles. And it doesn't matter what nationality you are. It doesn't matter, matter if you were born a Jew into God's chosen people. All who come by faith in Jesus Christ are justified. All. No nationality at all matters. Notice it says the, the circumcision or the Jews are justified by faith. 
Notice the verse. This is very important. For those of you who are a bit Sherlock Holmish, in verse number 30, there are two words. Why does it say justify the circumcision by faith, the, the Jews by faith, and the uncircumcision through faith? You see the different word, by and through? Why doesn't it use the same word? Why does it say, I'll say it again, so to get intrigue your curiosity. Notice what verse 30 says. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision, that's those that are saved, or those that are Jews, excuse me, by faith in the uncircumcision through faith. Two different words, by and through. I thought they were the same, Jews and Gentiles. Why, why two different words? Well, there's an optional way at the end of that verse, through faith, to translate this that our English translator, translation did not use. And that is the idea that justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through this same faith. When you look at the, at the word through in verse number 30 and why it's not the same as by, it's like this. God first offered, remember, back in your history, he offered the Jews salvation first. And then later on, he opened the door much, much wider and said that all Gentiles could come through faith, through this same faith. It, the word through there points back to the fact that God opened the door wider. It was first to the Jews and then through this same faith, we came. I'm so glad of it because I'm not Jewish. I'm not, I'm not, I only know a couple. I'm so glad that the door was opened wide. God first saved the Jews by faith in Christ and then opened the, wi the door wider to justify the Gentiles through this same faith, faith in Christ alone, faith to justify. That theological term in Reformation days was called solo fiducia. There's your Latin for the day. Solo, alone, fiducia, faith or trust. Justification by faith alone. You say, big deal, why a Latin word? Because Martin Luther got smacked up by it from the Catholic Church because he was standing and he was arguing two terms, two theological terms. Solo scriptura, we only have an authority called the Bible, not church authority, not, not bishop authority, not pastor authority, solo scriptura and solo fiducia. That is that we're saved by justification by faith alone, faith alone, not a bunch of church rules, not a bunch of dogma, dogma not councils set. Not things of our own works, just faith in Christ. Just faith in Christ. Solo fiducia. Some may say, then throw away the Old Testament. That's verse 31's question. We're right with the scriptures. Then why don't we just throw away the law? Since faith in Christ is everything, does faith make the law void or empty or worthless or useless? No, no, look at verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith or because of faith? God forbid. Yea, we, what's the next word? Yell it out. What is it? We establish the law. The fact that you came to the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, trusting him alone, establishes what the law was trying to do. The law is good when used to show God's perfect character and his standards and his rule. All those, those thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. It sets such a high standard because it's God's standard. And when you come to the place where you say, I cannot ever reach that, sta that standard, the law does what it was supposed to do. It convinces you, you can't do it. You've got to look for righteousness outside of yourself because you blew it. You're going to blow it in your lifetime. You're going to blow it every day. You must be Christ. That's how the law is established. The law has done its job. It is established. That word means it stands. It's done its job very well. It'll continue to do it. And there's another way that the law is established in salvation by faith alone. And I want you to get this, this verse here. It's established. How does, how does believing in Jesus Christ really establish the Ten Commandments, the law? There's another way. How does it make it stand? Because there was one, the author of our faith, that satisfied all the law's demands. You remember what he said? He wasn't coming to destroy the law, but that he was coming to fulfill the law? You know, there's only one, one person that has walked every day till the day that they died in every one of the Ten Commandments and every one of the Old Testament commands and fulfilled them perfectly. There's only one. His name is Jesus Christ. He established the law. He lived it perfectly. He didn't violate even in one point. All oh, those Jewish Pharisees got mad at him because he did not keep one of their applications to the law. But he didn't write that application. See, they had all these extra rules that go, go along. It sounds a little bit like independent fundamental Baptists. You know? I can't believe. 
that you think you're right with God, mister. Your hair is touching your ear right there. I see it. I tell the deacons and tell the pastor. Bring them to church to discipline. 